It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the program. Right here with me in the KFG studios, my business partners and fellow CFPs, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. So the GameStop short squeeze is as confusing as it is entertaining. So what happened and will it have a long-term impact on the markets and will it have a long-term impact on you? Now we're going to hit that and much more in this episode. This is just crazy what what has transpired. We're going to explain it. And I know we're a couple of weeks removed from it, but we'll uh, we'll go back in time and tell you what happened and why and all the drama. And then you'll be able to watch it on Netflix because they are making a movie I'm about sure it. I'm sure they will. So, all right. Hey, if you have any questions for us, we'd love to hear from you. If you need help, we'd love to hear from you as well. Uh, you can find us online, wisemoneyshow.com. You can also call or text us, 574-222-2000. And then all over social media, wherever you're at, we are there as well. That's where we get most engagement, most questions. So find us there. Search The Wise Money Show. Follow us there. I, I'm, I'm serious. Actually, I, I did hear, I'm assuming you guys heard this as well, that um, you know, pretty much every every production company came out and said, we're going to make a movie about this. And I think Netflix really? won the rights. Wow. Somehow won. Yeah, paid paid for it. But, I mean, it, this is the big short. It's uh-huh. the short heard around the world. It rattled markets. And we're going to talk about whether there are long-term implications. Were, was was Jerome Powell scared? Was I mean, were our, our hedge funds going to be different now? And uh, it really did seem like something surreal only around 2020 or around this time period would you have been able to convince me that actually happened it felt especially surreal to me because i was watching this unfold while i had covid and you're like am i hallucinating here exactly (laughs) what is happening okay so so we're going to explain what actually transpired with uh with reddit with wall street bets with gamestop and all that but we're going to start we're going to build up. So so this is a short squeeze, but so what's a short? What's shorting a stock? What's that mean? Shorting a stock is when you n- – normally what you do is you buy a stock and you hope that the price goes up and then you sell it. So – uh, that's called being long. Yeah. Buy you, low, sell high. Buy right? low, sell high. That's the big idea. So a short is the exact opposite of that. It's selling a stock. Hopefully you're selling it for high, mm-hmm. and then you're going to buy it because you didn't really own it, so you just borrowed it to sell it. You borrowed it from a friend. Uh, that just So you borrowed the stock. You sold it high, hopefully. You hope the stock goes down. And you buy it back. So you bought low and you sold high. You just didn't do it in that order. Exactly. <laughs> so it's basically the idea. And, and, and conventional investing, I mean, if, you, if this is a new game to you, you, this is very bizarre. You'd think, well, I buy the investments I believe in. I think I, think I can buy them at this price and they're going to go up. And just think the opposite. If you're a short investor or you believe an investment's going to go down, you want to use a special type of account and borrow someone's shares that you don't even own. You got to pay them a little fee for that, by the way. You sell it at a certain price with the with the hope, hey, it's going to go down in value and I'll be able to buy it back lower. Well, it doesn't always happen. Well, it doesn't always happen, but uh, I mean, who who would do something like this? I guess is one question that you have to ask because hopefully you're not listening to this strategy thinking, "Oh, I need to work that into my portfolio." No, this is a seriously risky strategy, as many people have found out recently. But when you're betting against a company, you know, obviously you've identified a company that you think is going to lose money. They're not a strong business, maybe. Maybe they have a broken business model or they're in an, in an industry that's really struggling. And uh, GameStop is a, is a perfect example of that because they're a retailer with lots of brick and mortar type um, locations just like you know, some of these department stores at, at the malls. Right? Well, I think the most common 
analogy is blockbuster, actually. Sure. But yeah. okay, so but but before we get into what happened with GameStop, just explaining a short isn't enough. We got to then explain a short squeeze because it's not like this just happened with GameStop once. Guys, people short the market all the time. A short squeeze, however, so so think about it this way. If you and a group or a whole bunch of other investors all said, you know what, this this price is going down. Let's short this stock. And you've got enough money in shorting and expecting the price to go down. If that price starts going up, you then at some point you've lost money because now the price is higher than where you would effectively sold it at. Okay. And at some point you just got to say, I guess I got to buy it back. Or in order to cover certain ratios in your portfolio, I got to buy it back. And what happens when a whole crowd of people start buying all at the same time? Well, Pushes the price up. That's, that's exactly right. And it doesn't even have to be huge volume or buying lots and lots of shares. It's just incremental. Buy, buy, buy. Keeps moving the price up. And those who have bet against that company, as you said, are losing money. And they may even be getting themselves into some trouble with the brokerage house that they have their margin account open with. Again, these are borrowed shares. They're paying interest on it. And every time that price goes up, they're losing money, which means they're getting into a position where they may start getting margin calls. Like you got to dump more cash into this uh, account because you're losing so much money. That's right. So that's, that's the short squeeze. Now, Kevin, I'm looking at the clock here as well. We're not even going to be able to get all this in. But with that backdrop, shorting stock, what that means, and this squeeze, this momentum that can happen, what in the world happened? What happened with GameStop, Reddit, Wall Street bets, some emoji with a nice blonde haircut? Well, the, the interesting thing, the, the, a newer thing that's come out is a company called Robinhood that said, listen, you can come on our platform and trade for free. And you can actually buy fractional shares of a company. So if you if you had three hundred dollars from your paper route and you put it in or if you had uh, what was what did do they have paper routes still i don't know what they do these <laughs> days for money josh i know uh so anyway they from, they, they get a robin hood app and try so whatever you put in your in your, in your robin hood app you you say well i only have three hundred dollars i can't buy a whole share of amazon it's not a problem you can buy a fractional share of amazon you can buy what, what's that, a tenth of Amazon uh, at, mm -hmm. at, the, at the moment? So you can buy fractional shares. So it, it, what it did is it enticed a lot of folks to get into it. And people didn't really fully understand, like, okay, well, they're just, they're just doing this for free because they're just super nice guys. Well, actually, not really. Um, what, they were, what they did, and they cleared through Citadel, um, Citadel the, the hedge fund, and they basically sold all of their – uh, information, yeah, their data, to all the data, so that these hedge funds would know who's doing what. You could, we could be done. We could be done. Like that's enough. D did you just hear what Kevin said? I mean, that is almost unbelievable. Like unfathomable. Like how, how is that legal? How is that possible? And yet, that's what happened. And yet, and it, and it got better because as soon. It, as as the, as uh, this started blowing up, and once the the feeding frenzy is on, once people start buying it and the shares get bid up, and then the people that were short said, "Well, wait a minute, I've got to buy as well because I've already sold it. I got to buy it back." That upward pressure mm -hmm. makes the, the 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 stock price go parabolic. We are we're, we're barely scratching the surface of what actually happened, but I'm assuming that's a nugget that Kevin just shared that you weren't aware of. Some of the behind the scenes and inner workings of this quote unquote free app Robinhood, which is perpetually one of the most downloaded apps in the app store. We're going to tell you the rest of the story and how it applies to you. We got that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is The Wise Money Show. You're at The Wise Money Show channel. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. Let me explain what we're doing here. This is a rather long video for 
YouTube, but this is our one hour talk show that airs right here on this channel every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Also on podcast, so check that out as well if you'd rather listen instead of watch. And then all throughout the week, we also air more, you know, shorter, more condensed, more direct videos about how to take your next wise step in your financial life. So that sounds like something that would benefit you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications and smash that thumbs up button, share the content as well, leave questions and all of that. Engage with us below in the comment section. Thank you very much. And we're actually hustling. We're going to have short breaks today, so not a lot of bonus content in between. All right, we'll pick it right back up and kind of Let's kind of talk through the story of what happened with that with that backdrop now. So, yeah, yeah. So, do, do, so, do we want to talk about the sinister stuff? N- well, yeah, yeah. But well, let's get into the story of what happened, which I can do. Okay, so. you get in, and we'll jump in. Okay. The game has stopped, but while it was going, what happened with GameStop? What What is this? Wall Street bets thing that happened. I almost made uh, coffee come out of Kevin's nose there. <laughs> got, got, got him. So thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard here in the KFG studios. Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. If uh, if you ca- if you catch podcasts, if you listen to podcasts regularly, every episode of the Wise Money Show is on podcast. Go check it out wherever you listen. Search the Wise Money Show. When you're there, rate the program. We appreciate that. Leave comments as well. Thank you. Yeah, and if you're short on dad jokes, just listen to the show because <laughs> right. Mike's got them. That's right. Okay, so here's so here's what happened. Rob, Kevin shared that Robin Hood is actually uh, in bed with Sheriff Nottingham, right? It, it, as the story goes, it, the 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 tale of Robin Hood that the government was stealing people's money, and so this individual came out and said, "No, I'm going to help." And it turns out. Robin Hood, in this case, was secretly working for the government. In this case, he was he Robin Hood. The app was secretly connected to the enemy, which is hedge funds. So I don't know if the folks on Reddit really caught all of that. But here's the way I understand it. Reddit is a is a forum where people chat. It's a chat room, basically. And there's a someone created a subreddit forum. So an actual chat room page called Wall Street Bets, which you guys know you're investing should be a long term approach that's connected and consistent with your overall financial plan. When you're buying and selling individual stocks, especially without doing all the research, that is gambling. That, mm-hmm. that really is. We'll come back to that. So Wall Street Bets, uh, uh, some folks started that, started talking about, hey, what what are you buying? What should I buy? What, what stocks do you like right now? And it got such a following that they finally, someone finally looked and said, hey, these hedge fund gazillionaires, they're all shorting this company called GameStop. They're all shorting it. In fact, as, as we shared what a short was, um, there was 130% short interest on GameStop. That also should be illegal, right? I mean, yep. you've got 100% of the value, all, all the shares of a company, all of those were shorted, and then another 30%. That's I, I don't even know how that's possible. So people are borrowing borrowed shares, essentially, at exactly. that point. And it was these hedge fund gazillionaires and this this um, this retail group of folks, these 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 folks on Wall Street Bet said, "We're going to stick it to the man. Let's start buying this thing. This these hedge funds, they're trying to squash us. Let's start buying it. And all if we, there's enough of us, we can make an impact." And they did, and they started buying, and it pushed the shares up. They started buying more. That pushed the shares up. We went from nineteen dollars a share to thirty one dollars a share to thirty nine to sixty five. Now January second. It went from 43 to 65. That's a 51% um, increase there. Went then to 76. Now, this is when it started getting national attention. 76 to $147. So let me say that differently. In a week, it went from $19 to 147 A company was a small cap company, went to a mid cap company, went to a large cap company within a week, even though their operations were failing, they'll likely go bankrupt. And that's the key to this whole story, that this is a company that many very smart individuals believed probably was going to be going bankrupt. And then it went from 147 to 347. In fact, during that day, it was up over 450 before it finished the day at 347. And then... Robin Hood, 
Again, we're, we're a retail investment platform for the masses. They said, now we're shutting you down. We, the man came in and shut this down, guys. I'm not kidding. They shut down the, the Wall Street they, they, or the, the Wall Street Bets subreddit forum. They shut it down for eight hours. And if you watched the, what was actually happening with GameStop, and it had spread by this time. It was into Nokia. It was into actually Blockbuster. It was into Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, they were spreading. They were going to take over Wall Street. And the powers that be said, no. And they just shut down their their ability to communicate on this platform. And the stock just started going down, down, down. Enough people said, hey, this is crazy. And so they turned the lights back on on the for on, on subreddit, but not until uh, after games uh, or um, uh, uh, Robin Hood and a few other places said, yeah, we're not even going to let you sell your shares. Right. You, you it, can't get out of your position. And right. it went it's it's been an almost free fall from there. Right, and the most amazing thing is the the folks that came out on CNBC and other things said, "Well, these people shouldn't be allowed to buy this stock because it's not good for them. They can't do the kind of research that the hedge funds can do." Uh, it is way too early for my blood pressure to be this high. I know. Yeah. It is yeah. boiling, <laughs> guys. That is, I, and I don't want to use the four letter F word, but that's unfair. Like that's, that's not fair. Right. And, and yet it's, you know, life's not fair. I know Mike boohoo, but that is outrageous that you're going to let some investors in a free market short a stock, not just short a stock, short 130% of it. And, and then, but other investors aren't allowed to then buy it. So what's your speculation on that? Like what, why would they intervene in this way, essentially to protect these hedge funds? Well, do, they, do you believe that it, this is just money power? This is David and Goliath, or are, are there some inherent risks baked into these hedge, hedge funds that if they start toppling, maybe it starts to spread throughout the, well, there's the economy? No, there's no doubt that that's true. If these if these hedge funds were all in in um, you know tandem allowed to fail, there would have been an enormous problem. If this is so. So this is the problem, Joshua. Private profits, public losses. Yeah, that's what we're dealing with right now. What we saw back in two thousand eight. Right. So they're they're not allowed to fail. And so I am not a conspiracy theorist. I am not a cynic. I try not to be. And <laughs> I'm. I try not to be a lot of these things. And I don't want to be a, a divisive person. But I look at this and I'm like, yeah, it it's the it's kind of the ruling class, the pedigreed folks who against the common man and that's 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 how it totally feels because the roaring kitty got this started and it 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 was all downhill from there yeah because when you look back at history the last to me this i thought it was strange i got a call from my son who's a sophomore in college and he has a, a buddy on the other line who's also a sophomore in college and he's saying dad what's a short What's a short <laughs> squeeze? And I'm thinking, oh no, because we are we are investors, so right. we do investing. A short and a short squeeze is more trading vernacular. So that's yeah. if I'm a trader, if I'm day trading, if I'm trading, blah, 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 that's what I would be talking about. We don't really talk about that that much. Mm-hmm. Um, and certainly, as we as we get to the end of the show and talk about, hey, how do I apply this? But I go back in history, and and the, my favorite short squeeze was the one that saved the bug <laughs> was in two, in 2008 because what happened was there was a there was a pretty amazing scarcity of Volkswagen shares and Porsche actually held a good number of Volkswagen shares Mo, the, it looked like the car companies were failing GM was going down Chrysler was going down Ford didn't because M- Alan Mulally I don't know <laughs> <laughs> him <laughs> he saved the company because they did a sell right. lease back of five billion dollars of real estate. Yeah, so they were flush with cash going into that crisis. They were flush with cash, so they were ready for the crisis. Ford survived. Um, the other two companies didn't, but Volkswagen survived. And I'm probably gonna have to tell you on the other side of the break how they did it. I'm gonna leave you hanging. <laughs> Good well, cliffhanger we, well there. so but but we also then need to kind of go back to what in the world is happening with Robin Hood. Where is this gone from here? And then how does this apply to you? Because Kevin's right. I mean, this short 
shorting a stock, short squeeze, that is trading vernacular. And there are, you're, you're either a trader, you're an investor, or you're just a saver. And the folks that we're working with and that, I, I mean, you should be an investor, a long-term investor connecting with your financial plan. We're going to fill in the holes and add more perspective on this. That more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. You had more time. I just wanted to make sure that you. No, knew no, no, no. And, and I have no idea how. This long, is where but. this is where I want to graph, because you say I should be an investor, not just a saver. You you can. You can put you could put up the graph of interest rates from 1997 to today and show people. Look, if you've made all the money you'll ever need, be a saver. Right. Mm-hmm. Don't, you, yeah. you don't need to worry about it. If well, maybe you, that's a future show. Investor, trader, investor, saver. We spend a segment on each. Let's roll. Third segment. I love it. You want to start this segment? Certainly, with all of the drama surrounding Robinhood, I mean, the app, what they were doing with your data, and it's not like your data, like, well, you know, what sort of uh, meme did you look at? No, your actual trading data that manipulates market and moves trillions of dollars. You'd think, well, that's enough to probably bury a company. Let me add to that. They then shut down your ability to trade. So you owned a stock. It was plummeting in value. They wouldn't even let you sell it. Hmm, that company's probably bankrupt. Nope, they're still the second most downloaded app online. We're going to continue to fill in the pieces of what happened with GameStop. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard here in the KFG studios with me, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on our YouTube channel. Go check it out if you haven't done so already. Go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, subscribe to it there. All right, so... To, to, I want to go back to the uh, Volkswagen story, but but there again, I mean, we're talking about GameStop, the big short, what happened. We're about to apply it to your situation, but I just want to let you know. I mean, let me pick up where I just left off on that ramble. Robinhood, who would trust a company that's selling your data, right? And yet people still are. Who would then trust a platform to house your hard-earned savings, your nest egg, and then no, have the ability to, like, you've seen it. They just will shut down trading at any time, especially if you're winning and someone else is losing. That's unbelievable. So, okay. So I, I, I will, I digress there. But Kevin, share then the, the, the story about Volkswagen. What, what, what so happened? So I'll, I'll, I'll make the story short is um, a couple of the car companies were believed to be failing and they were looking, we're heading into a, a crisis. People aren't going to be buying cars during this crisis. So we're looking at the other car companies. If we're hedge funds, the hedge funds shorted Volkswagen. And it was it, it was called an infinity squeeze because there weren't enough shares to cover the, the, the short squeeze. So in other words, when it's time for them to buy their shares back, there's not enough out there in the marketplace to be able to cover. Right. And so Porsche came out because they were holding a great number of shares and they came out on Sunday and said, hey, um, you guys might want to fulfill your your part of the bargain on this whole short deal because we've got a bunch of shares and everyone checked their pockets and like, oh, shoot, we don't have any shares. <laughs> so uh, there was a moment in time where Volkswagen was worth more than Exxon. It was, it was the, the, yeah, again, this violent short squeeze, but it saved the, it actually saved the company and um, Volkswagen and Porsche both benefited tremendously. Did Volkswagen for, issue more shares? I was shares just going to say, did they raise some money? do another I'm assuming that's public what offering happened. to get and that's what That's what Jim Cramer, I, I'm not a, necessarily a fan of Jim Cramer. He's one of the financial talking heads like us. Um, but he was saying, geez, GameStop should be raising money at these prices. They should be listing, you know, selling some more shares and trying to raise some money here. And I, I don't know if they did. But. Right. So, so again, the, how do you have 130% short interest? you have derivatives. Mm-hmm. And this is what people don't fully understand. They, th- they say, hey, do I own silver? If I own SLV, mm, you own a derivative. Do I own 
uh, Bitcoin, most most folks own a derivative. So this is so derivatives are fine in in fairly boring times. And again, we're probably getting a little too complicated. But this is where if you don't fully understand what you're doing, I think the lesson in GameStop is is that when Google goes and erases hundreds of thousands of one star reviews for a company like Robinhood you almost could con- conclude there is collusion. Yeah. <laughs> almost. You yep. could, yeah, may- maybe maybe you could. I-, I feel like it's these sensationalized stories also that make people, you know, you, you hear enough people, uh, investors, or I'll-, I'll call them speculators, making small fortunes in a short amount of time, and you think, man, my portfolio is boring. <laughs> why, why am I not in on that action? Or you, you hear about hedge funds and the allure of how they can make money when the world is falling apart, not just when things are going well, because they short stocks and they, they use a lot of these derivative investments and everything. Maybe I need some of that in my portfolio. The reality is you don't have to get that cutesy with your investment schemes. Mm. You know, the, the timeless principles of just owning really strong companies and having a piece of those those world class businesses, they will carry you to stronger and stronger uh, financial positions in the future. And you don't have to have hedge funds in order to achieve your goals. You don't have to be shorting stocks or or even trying to pick the next high flying company uh, to make money fast. That doesn't have to be your your approach. And uh, that's important to recognize because there are a lot of folks who they can have a great thesis on what's going to happen with a certain company and they can be very wrong in the short term. That is one of the lessons that comes from this GameStop story. Yeah, I mean, someone bought it at $450 thinking it was just going to keep going up. And this is the thing. I mean, so so there there is a question here of, well, did did. Wall Street bets, this subreddit company, did it break the wall? Did it break Wall Street? No, it didn't. I mean, there was some collusion involved, and there was some just nasty, nasty stuff that you would say, "Wow, I feel like I need to take a shower." I can't believe that's how that worked. Mm-hmm. And there's some ugliness and, and evil out there. I mean, all perpetuated by this greed. So there's some ugliness there. Okay, but it didn't really matter because you knew how it was going to end. I mean, GameStop as a company will eventually be valued correctly in the open market. And so this bidding up, this frenzy buying of bidding up the prices, it was, there was, and and it, this isn't just me looking back and, you know, saying, well, you know, hindsight's 2020, there's, uh, this thing was going to come crashing down. No, it just, it just was because at some point, five years from now, Three years from now, one year from now, GameStop might go bankrupt. I mean, that their company is on the edge. And so it wasn't worth as much as it, it, it as Wall Street said it was. And that's okay. That's okay for those investors. But I would argue it's not okay for you to be trying to chase those things. That's not how you build wealth. That is not. No. Have some people? Yes. But have some people lost all their wealth as well? Yes, actually, someone, a Wall Street or a, a uh, Robin Hood trader, took his own life because of how much he lost. Or so, thought he lost. Or thought mm-hmm. he lost, right? And, and so that's not how true wealth is made. In 99.999999% of the cases, you don't need to do that. And the, the end result is inevitable. It just is. The free market, the trading that we have, is ultimately going to win in the long term. But... This stuff can push its way around. Just last week, we saw it push into the cannabis space. People have believed that pot stocks were going somewhere for a long time. And that industry just hasn't been proven, let alone these companies. Are they really valuable? Can they generate a long-term profit? But Wall Street bets, you know, pumped them up, and then they quickly deflated, very quickly. Mm-hmm. So Well, there was a there was a joint action there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I... I, I so there bad. is a question as to, I, there's there's a there's two additional questions that we've got to answer here or or do so hopefully soon, and that is, um, so what strategy should should you be taking in your investments, and then and then second, I mean, 
why was this happening in the first place? And is it is it likely to continue? Um, and should I be watchful for this? Should I try to should I try to jump on this and jump out if it starts happening again? I mean, so there are bigger bigger implications that we've got to talk about with you um, with you. So we've got that. We've got listener questions and a few other things to to make sure we hit. So that and more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Yeah, this is the problem with WFRN because we needed to keep talking about that. And I had enough time. I needed to tease it out, but they're not going to hear that yeah. mm-hmm. or hear this. So, bummer. But I want to talk about okay, why? Why what? Why why this speculation? You know, the Roaring Kitty made fifty million bucks. Do you know? Understand how he did it on on five thousand dollars? No. It's so options. Derivatives. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. he he had he bought options, so he. If I buy options, I limit my downside. Like all I can lose is what I paid for my option. But I really have almost unlimited upside. I mean, the amazing thing is, is that you have 20 year olds talking about options and learning about options right now. Mm -hmm. Whereas (laughs) people more than twice their age struggle to remember how an option works. (laughs) Okay, I had a I had a question in here. I'm not seeing it. Though. <clears throat> and then we've got to turn this we got to get started anyway, but So well, I I think if this is a show about financial planning, COVID brain. How how are we going to finish that? I mean, we, that's where that's why I don't think we should be should have been done talking about this in the last segment just go on to listener questions. We've got to then now synthesize and and apply this. Yes. And turn the air conditioning on in this place. And and so I'll tell you, I talked to a good friend yesterday about gambling. And he said they have a surrounded. Um, if you look at the blue chip, South Bend, Dwajak, he said they're surrounded. And he he talked about someone who burned through their entire retirement mm-hmm. in in COVID. Wow. Actually, that, so so if you're listening here to the bonus content, we actually have a show on that coming up. How many people took money out of their retirement accounts last year due to some of the programs? And was it justified? And now they're behind. And how do you catch up? So, all right, let's get into it. Last segment, land on the plane. What happened with GameStop is something for the ages. I mean, it's it's uh, it's going to go down in stock market history. It really will. Will it happen again? Why did it happen in the first place? We told you what happened, but I mean, why? And then how does this apply to you? We got that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG, KFG Studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online, wisemoneyshow.com, and then follow us on on social media. Wherever you're at, we are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show. Follow us there. All right, so we've explained the short, uh, short squeeze, what happened, and some of the kind of back alley arrangements that are set up in Wall Street and some of these hedge funds. There's a bigger question to me, and that is why. Why did this happen and why now? And I, I would tell you, we have no, no one has, I have no idea what's going to happen in the market next week. You don't either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, or, or two weeks from now or next month or next year. However, it certainly seems like there is some wild speculation that's happening in the markets. And um, we could show you some charts, and obviously that doesn't play well over the radio. Um, but where what's happened with the activity of the S&P 500 over the past ooh, six months, and it's the activity, the volume has actually decreased quite a bit, while the activity of penny stocks is absolutely parabolic. Yep. The activity of options, absolutely parabolic. There is rampant speculation. And I, why, why are we telling you this? This is a show about financial planning, wise habits of financial stewardship. And, and I'm bringing this up so that you're aware. 
so that you're aware. And just like Kevin was talking about when his when his sophomore child calls and talks about this, you likely have heard about GameStop and short squeezes and what should I be buying this and what about that? Are you making money in Bitcoin? Are you making money in doggy coin? Are you, you know, and that frenzy might all feel like, like you actually might feel like you're missing out if you're not doing that. And yet we would remind you there is wild, unimaginable speculation happening in the markets. And, and I, I don't know how long, but we've seen this before many times. Every time that we get into a bubble situation or things get over overdone, they get overheated, it is human nature that just takes current trends and projects them out into the future like this can keep on going indefinitely, and it does not. And it is often in these speculative types of, of bubbles that many people get hurt and unfortunately, sometimes it's entire generations that can be affected in their in their thinking about the investment world. Like this is this is how it works. Are you kidding me? I just lost my my shirt here. Yeah. Um, you know, you go back to the dot com bubble, which was the start of my career. All throughout my college years, everyone was just glued to the TV, watching CNBC, trying to figure out what's the next dot com explosion going to be, where you're going to just make a fortune. And uh, unfortunately, people were paying prices for companies that made no sense because they didn't understand the investments or they believed that it was a new world that we were in. And we're in a free market. You're allowed to do that. I, I would tell you, it, be very, very careful. Now, um, this will end with investing is evil, stock buying is dead. Because that's how people felt in 2008. That's how people felt in 2001. That's how people felt in 1973. That's how people, like, the, you. if you just search a, a headline like that for Time Magazine, you will see a similar headline pop up r right around each crisis. Now, will that happen in 2021? I actually don't think so. Well, mm -hmm. 22? Probably not. 23? I have no idea. You just don't know. But I would tell you one application of this is take a comprehensive financial planning approach, a wise approach, a prudent approach, an approach that is consistent with all six areas of your financial life. If it's just about investment planning and you're trying to squeeze as much um, you know, as you can out of that orange juice, you're going to take wild risk. But if you're investing for a purpose, i.e. your retirement plan, and you're like, well, this could either work and I could retire a couple years earlier, or I could never be able to retire, you would say, I'm not taking that risk. I'm not, I'm not going connected to my cash flow situation. Yeah, I'm not going to do this. You could even look at your tax planning situation and look at the damage this causes within your taxes and say, yeah, this doesn't make sense. So take a planful approach. The other application, second application I would tell you, is be very, 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 very watchful of, of how you and where you invest. The, 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 uh, the jig is up on Robinhood, and, and, these and yet they're still wildly popular. And so uh, to me, I would just be very careful what apps you're using or what platforms you're using to invest because you have no idea what they're doing with that data and you truly as we've seen here don't know if you can trust when you want to buy something or sell something you don't know if you can so actually you truly know you can't trust it i mean this is the thing when we look at what happened you would say well that would never happen they would never prevent me from buying a stock yeah they stopped you from buying a stock they would never so, i mean i own this they're not going to stop me from selling it yeah. Yes, they will. Yep. You could place an order at 10 a.m. to sell something, and it might get filled at 3.30 p.m. at a wildly different price. Mm -hmm. that, yep. I, so, I, guys, this is your life savings. I would, I would just significantly caution you from using those type, types of platforms. Yeah, that's the trick. I mean, you know, the best things in life are free, and everything else costs a lot of money. And so if you feel like, hey, I'm getting something for free, I'm getting this free app and it makes it super easy and simple for me to do something, I'd be careful. I'd be, I would be super careful when people are like, well, I don't, you know, I don't know if I want to use the, you know, the same brokerage company that my parents use. <laughs> you actually, you might want to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one, one of the lures here of, of 
Robin Hood is we'll give you a free stock. <laughs> and uh, and Weeble and some of these others do this as well. We'll give you we'll give you a free stock. And again, uh, they're not doing that out of the goodness of their hearts. I mean, they've got profits somewhere else, and and um, those profits are actually well, they're paying they're they're getting paid to give someone your data. Right. But crazy. if I get one four dollar stock for opening an account, yeah. it's, it's not kind of like getting nothing, right? <laughs> it's four dollars these days is close to nothing. I remember when four dollars you could like upsize your value meal. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. You know, it, it, you look back at the past 12 months or so, this past year, and think about what has been happening. How many new investors have entered into the market because of services like Robinhood, making it easy? Um, I, I'm thinking about all of the new forums that are popping up, like Reddit and this Wall Street Bets that has gotten so much attention and everything. And you have a situation where it's basically democratizing information. You know, the, the big Wall Street... Um, hedge funds and and investment banks and everything, they don't have a monopoly on information anymore. And when you get enough people kind of all uh, reading the the, the same articles and and believing the same thesis, a um, a, a herd mentality can can spike up or, or be sparked at any time. And that can drive things in either direction. And the, the risk is that if your investment approach only makes money when the herd is, is stampeding in one direction, you really don't have a long-term game plan in, in yeah. a situation like that. You really are speculating that you can get out of the way of that herd before you get trampled or it just dramatically changes directions on you. And uh, to, to me, you, you said something in one of the earlier segments, Mike, that is an important principle to just understand about individual stocks like this. Over the long term, they are valued based on the profitability of the company that you are owning a small slice of. If they're not generating profits and 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 producing uh, dividends for investors potentially, then the only way you're really making money is if you can buy it low and sell it to someone else at a higher price in the future. And you know, there, there's this greater fool um, a, a approach or philosophy out there that says, you know what, as long as I can find someone else who's willing to pay more than I paid, then I can get out any time. But you don't know if you were the last buyer on that company for a while yeah. and, uh, and things can move against you. So the, the get rich quick experience that many people have felt over this past 12 months or so, it is producing overconfidence in my opinion. And um, it, it may have you, it may be messing with your mind a little bit. Like, am I getting rich fast enough? And I would just encourage you, plan on getting rich slowly and methodically over time through your habits, not your great idea that you read about online. Okay, so let's, let's, so let's use the balance of our time here. Then, then what should you do? I mean, so you should take a comprehensive approach to your financial life, which is looking at all six areas of your financial life and how your decisions can bring synergy to those, your present financial position, your protection plan, your tax plan, your investment strategies, your retirement and college plan for your kids if you have them and want to help them with school, and your estate plan. And you've got to make great decisions that bring all six areas together. And, and you know, since that's not your specialty, you should hire a certified financial planner who's helping you with that and, and looking at your financial situation and helping guide you and and what solutions are out there and maybe some creative ways to bring synergy there. Yeah, look at your team right now. Yeah. Who is on your team and does your team talk? I mean, this is the conversation that we have over and over and over again. Do you have a team? Uh, kind of. Does your team communicate with each other? No, never. Who's in charge of leading your team? Well, I kind of am, but I don't really understand what I'm doing. Hey, listen. Of course you don't. It, th this is very, there's never been a more complicated time in the history of the world to accumulate wealth. You want to have someone who can manage your team and oversee your team to make sure all of these areas, you are getting the very best thing for your situation. And then so, okay, so then within that, and within the, specifically the investment area, I guess I'm hearing these wise money people tell me uh, my investment should be boring and I shouldn't really want high returns. 
I mean, your investments, you should have a long-term strategy. It doesn't need to be boring, and it doesn't mean you've got to sacrifice returns. In fact, I mean, we would, you've heard us share before, you should have a diversified mix, but you should have a momentum strategy as well. In fact, with what's going on in the world today, I lean more towards that momentum strategy. But the philosophy is you should have both. And that momentum strategy has been wildly exciting, <laughs> mm -hmm. wildly exciting, even this year and certainly in 2020 as well. And so doesn't just because you don't, you shouldn't jump on short squeezes and GameStop and the next thing doesn't mean your financial life and investment strategies need to be boring and dull and uh, you know, uh, not profitable. They should be profitable. And very, very beneficial to you. So, all right. I, I hope that helps. That is all the time we have for today. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, myself, and all of us at KFG, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.